Thank you for listening to Pesto Comics. This is the entry for January 15th, 2024. The comics that inspired me. Garfield. Really? Garfield? Yes, really. Garfield is underrated. Can Jim Davis's creation be cringe from time to time? Absolutely. Overexposed? Hell yeah. At least when I grew up. Respected for how ubiquitous and successful it has become? Very rarely. My history with Garfield. If I were a classier person, I'd tell you that I was inspired to get into comics by Alan Moore and Neil Gaiman, works that really transcended the medium and forever changed the course of my life. But I'm not. I got into comics reading the Sunday Funnies. Those were the only comics that I read for a long while. The world of superheroes were a blind spot for me until the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers became my obsessions, at which point my cousin introduced me to floppies. I've always been doing some kind of work since I was 10 years old. My first job was delivering the Toronto Sun around the Flower Town neighborhood of Brampton, Ontario. After the early Sunday morning deliveries were done, I would get to the part I've been waiting for. The comics pull out headlined by Garfield. I enjoyed all the comic strips, most of them at least. I was too young to appreciate Doonesbury. But Garfield has always been in the forefront of my mind as it would kick off my Sunday reading. When I would think of reading Sunday comics, I'd think of Garfield. It probably says a lot about good placement, being the first strip that everyone was reading every week. Or did the success come and then the good placement? Who knows, but I've been a fan ever since. Garfield, to me, is a baseline comic. It's so consistently fine. Some strips are better than others, but they're always firmly in the range of good. Never bad, never amazing. And frankly, that's impressive. Forget Dennis. Garfield was the bad boy of the funnies page. When I was a kid, there was nothing funnier than a Garfield comic. You have to understand that I grew up in a time where Bart Simpson saying, Eat my shorts, was considered edgy and uncalled for. Having sweet family strips like Marmaduke or Family Circus being headlined by a lazy, burping, ungrateful cat was as edgy as it got for me at 10. I loved it. He was the only one that could get away with treating everyone around him like an utter annoyance and still come out somewhat likable. Garfield knows what he likes and what he doesn't. He tolerates the rest, like John. It shaped my sensibility for comedy way more than it had any right to. I think this led me to appreciate the more sarcastic comedy out there, like It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia or Seinfeld before it. More importantly, understanding sequential storytelling. Garfield was simple enough for my young brain to digest. The scenery, if you could even call it that, rarely changed from panel to panel. Even the actions were minimal. There's just enough there to understand the passage of time without getting lost. It seems silly to anyone who reads comics regularly, but it's a real barrier for new readers to understand how to properly read a comic. And if you really want to break their brains, you should throw them a manga. Comic strips are the medium boiled down to their essentials. Garfield is the prime version of that. Kelvin and Hobbes, Peanuts, and other strips, they'll get all the praise for really defining the medium, but to me, Garfield is the most distilled version. Why am I telling you all this? I love traditional comics. DC, Indies on Kickstarter, any of the other big publishers, they're getting my money on a weekly basis. But I also love comic strips. I read them every day on Go Comics. Peanuts, Pooch Cafe, Leo, my beloved Garfield, and a dozen more. It's the highlight of my mornings. I also read a bunch of web comics like Blue Chair, Safely Endangered, Mr. Lovenstein, and Berkeley Muse. It's always been a dream of mine to have my own ongoing comic strip, along with writing traditional comics. This year, I'm taking the first step, dipping my toe into the weekly comic strip, Working Afterlife. For those of you who read my last post, you may have seen this as working stiff. I didn't do my SEO homework, so we're going with a change. I'm starting small on purpose. I have two more strips I've written, one uh, three times weekly and another daily, but I want to iron out this process before I dive in head first. Working Afterlife will be a free strip that you can find on Webtoon, Tapas, and Global Comics when it launches. You'll definitely hear more about that as we get closer to ready. The newest Garfield movie. Garfield has not had a great time in theaters. Much like the comics, the movies have never been more than just fine. Bill Murray was pretty good at the voice, and at least Chris Pratt isn't retire- required to do an accent this time around. I'll probably watch it, but in the meantime, I'll be sticking to the funny pages. In other news, I'm on the hot seat. 
I was recently on the Comics Launch podcast with a mastermind hot seat talking about strategies to promote upcoming projects in between campaigns. Uh, you've seen a little bit of that here already. And if you're interested in funding your own comics, I highly recommend checking out Tyler's podcast. It's a classic at this point, and it's very, very informative. What's next? February 1st. Digital is the future. It has to be, right? And February 15th. Long live the floppy. The joy of a good comic shop and the thrill of the chase. I want to thank you for listening. I really appreciate you joining the newsletter or listening on YouTube, Spotify, whatever else you're listening to out there. And uh, please, if you can, share it with a friend. Let people know what's going on here. I I appreciate you so much and uh, can't wait to talk to you next time. Thanks.